so um, to go back to where I was, uh, the doorbell had rang, so I'm <laughs> going to just continue on. Um, what we were talking about was just mark making and the importance of blank space. And I love the blank space that I have in this particular piece. Um, it just really speaks to me and I think it brings out so much of this type of art poetry painting. Um, you can see the upside down E, those marks that I love, some little roses. Um, you can see the line work um, with the birds or, or butterflies, whatever you want to think of um, when you see those and the leaves. Um, I also used a lot of lines, white lines, black lines. Um, this is when I don't have an up close um, picture of my work, but poetry of the desert. Again, a lot of white space. Not so much this mountain piece, but for mark making, this had a very interesting textured style of mark making, um, not typical of what I usually do. And then um, my painting in the elements, this mountain painting does use a lot of white space as well. The polka dots, um, that beautiful fluorescent red and white acrylic paint mixed in, and I used like an oil stick over top. So this is just an example of sort of mark making in my work um, with the cows. When I first started mark making, I would use a lot of stencils. So the background of these cows um, was just playful. It was um, a canvas that I had done the original piece on and I was using stencils and just, um, just really playing around with marks. Um, this one, Alberta Roots because I'm born and raised uh, Calgarian from Alberta. Um, you can see all the blank space in this piece and I find that really effective. And I love the drips, which I picked up from Laura Horn Art. And yeah, so this is just an example of how I use white space in my work. Just a little, little example here. And um, what I'm gonna do now is just check how we are for time. So, um, so in front of you, if you want to get a background that you've painted that's dry, a watercolor background, this is the time to play with supplies um, such as paint pens or, um, again, this um, studio uh, gel. Um, I got this at the dollar store, the Dollarama here in Canada. Um, just playing around with um, line work. So and just not overthinking a bit, not overthinking it, sorry, like whatever kind of comes to your head. Um, I love um, I love botanicals, um, so I love these um, Sharpie paint pens, so I'm just gonna create like a botanical with like very interesting shapes. You can see uh, the watercolor wasn't quite dry, it picked up a little bit of the paint pen um, I love using these. These are sort of a newer tool I've been using. Um, they're meant to be a highlighter, but I use them in mixed media. They're by Faber-Castell, um, which is a wonderful brand out of Germany. And, oh, <laughs> and I've never had that happen. They're very, very high quality, but you can see, obviously, not everything is made 100%. Um, but I love them and you can see the matte finish. There's a bit of a shimmer. Um, they're very waxy and uh, I'll use this one. Um, I like to use neons in my work and uh, it's just a very subtle way of adding um, sort of a matte neon color uh, in your watercolor work. I love the Posca pens, um, the Japanese paint pens. This one's bronze. And uh, in order to um, stand out on here, I'll just do this big bronze leaf. In my work, I use a lot of um, this leaf shape, which I love. And um, it's just a matter of playing around with different supplies um, in a way that you think might be interesting. So here's the jelly roll pen. You can see what it looks like uh, over the paint and uh, on the paper itself. Um, I love the new color Karn Dosh crayons. They're amazing. So if we were to choose one to go on top of this pink, this is the um, water soluble yellow. 
and then this is more of a pale yellow and I'll show you because it's water soluble I love these you can wet your paintbrush and turn it into watercolor so if you put it down put a mark down and you didn't like it you can actually remove it which is pretty neat so those are again water soluble and uh, beautiful beautiful mark making tools um, let's just say I want to um, add this color over here I can do that there's also non-water soluble uh, crayons so again this one the water soluble what a gorgeous color that is um, and that creates an interesting texture right there but the um, the wax crayon, the Neocolor 1s versus the Neocolor 2s, you can see that says Aquarel, so that's water soluble, whereas this is a permanent wax pastel. So this one, if you made a mark over top of your work, like this, you would not be able to, um, if you get it wet, it would stay put. So that just shows you an example of mark making tools. I use those a lot in my work. I love them. Um, what else do I like to use? I love these jelly roll pens. Again, this is one that has a little bit more of a shimmer. So you can kind of see that shimmer. And yeah, so a really good stress reliever is to sit down and put down watercolor or acrylic paint that you love let it dry and then maybe grab a couple supplies you can buy a lot of these uh, paint pens individually uh, at the art store this one is a bit more expensive it's um five dollars and i think it was 75 cents from an art store here in calgary um, but you can buy individual fairly reasonably priced um, supplies like just one say you can go to the art store and just buy one of these neo colors in a color you love um, I use black and white a lot I love the black and whites and I'll show you that at some point um, or you can you know there are cheaper uh, acrylic paint pens um, it's just finding one that works for you and what you like. Um, the key is to store them horizontally. When they're stored vertically, that cartridge gets dry, um, whereas they're stored horizontally, that inner cartridge mixes the paint and it's really happy when it's stored like this. So just a heads up on storage if you do buy them and always make sure they're capped. Um, so yeah, that's sort of it as far as mark making. Um, I just wanna see, I'm gonna look at my mind map because that's what I do when I'm trying to remember things. Oh yeah, so um, mark making tools, I mean, if you find a paintbrush you love, like a foam brush or maybe a sponge, um, you know, how do you use that to make a mark? That's really important. Um, we talked about like what shapes come to you. So for me, it was the mountains, the triangles, um, and I love the circular shapes. Um, I love Betty Krause, who's an abstract artist, a beautiful abstract artist, Betty Franks Krause. She has a book called Fields of Flowers, and she does these beautiful abstract pieces and uses a lot of beautiful mark making. Um, so she's inspired a lot of my work as well, my more abstract acrylic pieces. Um, and uh, so it's just a neat way of looking at a different type of mark making. Um, when I think about my childhood, I think about like the pictures that my mom um, had up around the house, probably still has up around the house, sort of, for me, it was more Japanese inspired, more Asian influence, um, looking at different patterns, cultures um, that had surrounded you growing up or surround you now, what you like, what you don't. Um, we talked a bit about blank space, but I wanted to talk about energy. So it's really important to have energy in your mark making, especially when you want to start selling your work. So it is really obvious if you perfectly try to paint something versus, um, you know, obviously had practice, but put more energy into it and just didn't care so much about it being a perfect, um, say like a perfect, um, mark. 
Um, so just to remember, it is more important probably to have energy in the painting, in the mark making, instead of a perfect mark, if that makes sense. Um, I wonder if I can revive that pencil. But yeah, this is how I get a lot of neon in my work. I'll see if I can sharpen that and uh, revive it. So anyway, thanks for following me and we'll see you soon.